also as a result of rereading Freud and reading about women are naturally masochistic. I thought, mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. And I wrote an article mm -hmm. called The Myth of Women's Masochism. It was published in American Psychologist. Mm -hmm. And then somebody asked me if I would write a book oh. about that. So I wrote this book, The Myth of Women's Masochism. It was in press, mm -hmm. and every time I read a book, you know, I, like most people, I think, why did I do that? Everybody always already knows this, or maybe mm -hmm. it's all wrong. I'm so stupid. And I got a phone call. It was just about to be published. I got a phone call from Jean Baker Miller saying, did you hear what the American Psychiatric Association is planning to do? They're preparing for DSM-3R, and they have proposed these categories that we feel are very dangerous to women. And one of them was masochistic personality disorder. And I thought, I thought that was on the way out, mm -hmm. you know. Well, maybe, maybe, I guess I'm glad I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. so she invited me to come to a meeting that was going to be of some uh, uh, women within that APA. Um, she, Teresa Bernardez, and, they, and Judith Herman, and they had gotten together with Lenore Walker and a couple of other people, and they wanted to know if I would come because because they were making such a, a, a fuss mm -hmm. about these categories that um, the DSM committee people had, had appointed something they called the Ad Hoc Committee on the, I think, on the controversial diagnoses mm -hmm. to go meet with the women. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned out, just by chance, I was going to be in Washington that day on a book tour mm -hmm. for The Myth of Women's Masochism. <coughs> Excuse me, the previous day, I was starting my book tour by being on Phil Donahue's show. So I do the Donahue show in which I was saying, you know, the main message of the book is nobody enjoys suffering. Masochism is a dumb idea mm -hmm. because it's defined as pleasure and pain. Mm -hmm. That's like saying it's the good in evil. Mm -hmm. It means nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and so I was talking about, well, what are people talking about when they say something is masochistic? Mm -hmm. Well, it's well-socialized traditional feminine behavior, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's not good. We mm -hmm. shouldn't be calling it masochism. And so that's what the book was about. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm going to this meeting in APA headquarters. Mm -hmm. And here was, this was my frame of mind as I, as I headed for that meeting. I knew some of the people, the names of the people who were on that ad, ad hoc mm -hmm. committee to deal with the women. And these were people whose work I had read in graduate school. These were experts. And I thought, I was raised in a family in which we were really encouraged to ask questions, never be afraid to be wrong. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I'll make my little two-minute speech that I prepared, and then the experts will tell me what I'm failing to understand or material I wasn't familiar with. And I'll learn something. That'll be good, right? So I get up there and I make my little speech about nobody enjoys suffering and you're pathologizing traditional socialized feminine behavior and especially this is the way that victims of violence mm -hmm. will act. Mm -hmm. Silence. The first comment was Robert Spitzer, head of the DSM-3R, says to me, I saw you on Donahue. I was speechless. What am I supposed to say? I was so embarrassed for him, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I didn't want to make him look more foolish. And I just said, oh. And he said, I agreed with almost everything you said. And I said, oh, well, then I'm not sure why you would want to be putting this category in the DSM. And he said, because we see people like this all the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I think that what you're seeing are people with not much self-confidence mm -hmm. or who are just well-socialized women or who are victims of violence. Anyway, it was just the most bizarre exchange. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of this, and you know, Lenore spoke, Judy spoke, Jean spoke, Teresa spoke. I mean, they were, they were amazing. Mm -hmm. And then the ad hoc committee says, the head of it says, uh, well, shall we adjourn, and he's saying it to his committee in front of us, shall we adjourn to, dare I say it, the Freud room? So they go off to the Freud room to decide what to do, and they come back. Lo and behold, yes, they're going to still keep pushing for this to go in, but they're going to rename it um, self-defeating personality disorder. So that was how I got involved in that. When I sat there and I saw these so-called experts saying idiotic things and irresponsible things, I was 
horrifying because I was I was teaching the DSM as an advocate to my graduate students. I love logic. I used mm -hmm. to be a debater, and I would say, "Look, they have these wonderful decision trees, you know, and it's all based on science. Somebody yeah. read all the research and then pulled it all together for us." Yeah. I was shocked, mm -hmm. and that was how I got involved in the whole DSM process.